Hello and welcome to Money Life. This is Sucheta Dilal. This time I'm talking about an issue that if you're not aware of, you better be. It is about your privacy, your digital data, and what happens to it. So I'm going to title this video blog, Congratulations, Your Privacy is Officially Compromised and You Have No Remedy. How does this happen and why am I saying it? Okay, so let's, this video is about a case study about someone, let's call him Mr. X, who registered an LLP. And even before the registration happened, one day, sitting in the morning at 11, he gets a call saying, sir, your LLP has been registered. I'm from ICICI Bank. Can I come and open an account for this new company? So he says, how would you know about it? I haven't got any information. So he says, Humko backend se mil jata hai. Or if you don't understand Hindi, we get this information from the backend. So Mr. X says, you get it from the backend even before I get to know that my company is registered. He has no answer, puts the phone down. So Mr. X logs it to his computer and says, let me check, let me go to the website. Before he does that, he sees his mailbox and flood of messages. So there's one, congratulations on your new startup. Another, congratulations, few more things for your new venture. And believe it or not, this is just one of 15 messages that he gets in the next half an hour to 45 minutes. That's emails, then WhatsApp messages, and phone calls. So I see I say I wasn't the only one. In fact, most banks. And no official confirmation. Remember, that is a key part. No official confirmation. So if you think that this is a wonderful way to tell you that your company has been registered, you got it all wrong. This cannot be the first welcome that you receive from Digital India and doing things online. This means that your data is being systematically stolen at source, even before the Ministry of Corporate Affairs gets around to sending you an official email saying, yes, you finished all your online uploads and procedures and checks and balances, and your company has been registered. Even before that, companies marketing their services have got all your information, your mobile number, your email, your PAN maybe, God knows what else, you don't know. And they are spamming you with not just bank accounts, but a whole bunch of services. And this is the experience of everybody. Now, where is the official mail? Believe it or not, it comes a few days later, right? If this does not frighten you, let me tell you, it better. Because all you need is this personal information and maybe some nice guesswork to be able to get into your account, maybe get into your bank account, maybe change details about your company, maybe pretend you have done something as a director. The possibilities of misuse are endless if your data is not safe and if it is stolen at source and i'm using this word stolen because i didn't stop at what happened when i got to know about this i contacted senior officials or bureaucrats in the ministry of corporate affairs who were themselves extremely surprised so when alerted to what is happening they have initiated an investigation into this data leak what does this mean this means that it is being stolen there is no formal okay to give away this data. And believe it or not, even if, first of all, if there is a formal okay, it needs your permission. It's your data. It's not because government is asking for it as a mandatory requirement. They can do whatever they want to with it, right? But it really means that if this data is going, being stolen at source, you have serious issues. Now, this is a point where I'm quite certain that a whole bunch of techies will jump in to tell me or gaslight me into what is scraping of data because what will a woman know right so they will jump in to tell me that data can be scraped from public databases yes we know about it we know that it's happening but that happens later should happen later if the data goes away even before official intimation it means that it's not being scraped it's being sold from the very source and 
believe me, the ministry would not be concerned. The ministry would not start an investigation if it was that public data is being stolen and scraped by very, very smart companies in the IT sector, smart and unscrupulous, I may add, who are compiling it into databases and selling. That we have lived with for years. It is a problem. It has not been fixed. This is a bigger problem. This is data being stolen at source. So let me come back to company X. Like I told you one morning, the first call is ICICI Bank. And I told you the conversation. The call, the other emails that he got, Access Bank, two from HDFC, Indusind Bank, South Indian Bank, Deutsche Bank, three from Kotak Bank, which means that multiple people were buying the data within one bank, each independent of each other, because they're all competing for targets, right? Now, this is one set, banks. The second set is all kinds of services, filing buzz, then uh, HNG eBiz, Biz at Ease, Falcon eBiz, Filing Buddy, My Biz Development. What are they doing? Most of them are offering you legal consultancy, compliance, other kinds of guidance, how to meet all those rigid requirements of the government, which is so difficult, including tax filings, board meetings, everything that you comply with, they are there pay them money and they're willing to offer it. These are the services. And there was even one from Startup India, which says that it's going to help you get all kinds of concessions and benefits that are open for LLPs, limited liability partnership companies. Now, you didn't know that there are these guys, they have your data, they're offering you business services. Maybe some people fall for it. We don't know how scrupulous any of them are. If that weren't enough, there are even people offering you rubber stamps, letterhead makers, trademark and license experts. Honestly, a small LLP, how much a business is going to provide for all of them? But they have bought your data and they're making a pitch to you. Buy rubber stamps, discount on Ford, stuff like that. MCA support was an email, not to say you're registered, but to say under Startup India, you can take benefits from the Indian government for your new venture. And if you go and register, that is also spammed. So who knows whether it's going from MCA to Startup India and then being sold or sold directly from MCA, but it was part of these innumerable emails, WhatsApp and calls that Mr. X got. The email that really mattered came at 8.40 in the night, three days later, by which time would you really blame Mr. X if he thought it's just yet another spam mail selling rubber stamps or worse? As I said earlier, silver lining to this whole story is that senior bureaucrats in MCA are concerned and are doing an investigation. That just is one part. They will investigate. They may plug this loophole. But the issue of compromising your privacy is, as you should imagine, much larger because this is just one example. You're doing compliances all the time. So many people are creating databases with all your records, whether it's when you buy shares, when you have a provident fund, everything is all online these days. Everything requires all your data. Everything requires a link to your bank account. If it's not safe, how safe is your hard-earned money? I am the trustee handling things at Money Life Foundation. I also am routinely harassed with calls to my mobile numbers, number offering compliance and legal services, or offering me help to get corporate social responsibility funds. Where is this data leaking from? Again, from the statutory websites. Which one? It's impossible for me as an ordinary person to know. Now, is privacy some newfangled, extremely woke, liberal uh, thing that we are worried about? No. If it is an issue that we have been discussing for 20 years or more, in fact, ever since things went online, I myself have written a column way back in May 2005 when I used to write for the Indian Express where I talked about the need for an effective privacy policy. And I mentioned, I've quoted a whole lot of leading data security experts and I've mentioned their concerns about information that's collected by the tax department, credit information companies and other government mandated databases, mutual funds, depositories, voter banks, what have you. That's a time when people seem to be more aware or more concerned. In fact, 18 years later, like I said, things have gotten worse. 
But at that time, in 2005, the Securities and Exchange Board of India was the first to begin collecting biometrics. They had created what is called a map and database. People had to stand in line, give their fingerprints. There was so much of anger because the financial sector said, why only us? And thanks to protests by every segment of the financial sector, this was jucked. 18 years later, or rather 15, 16 years later, you have Aadhaar, a unique identity with the same biometrics. This entire financial sector, which protested in 2005, not a squeak out of them, even though there were biometrics, because this time it was all over India. And this time it meant business for them. Because this was going to allow them Aadhaar based onboarding of customers, which is the same bunch that is spabbing us, which is stealing our data, which is calling us up. So they had no problems anymore. In fact, this issue is something that bothers anyone who's concerned about privacy. Privacy is not such a vague concept, it's about your safety. Privacy is not about hiding in your room and not being seen or wearing a hijab. It is about your data. It's about your hard-earned money. In fact, all this, just as this was happening and I was following up Mr. X, I saw this post by Deepak Maheshwari, a public policy consultant, where I was tagged, where he had written, he had reposted an article that he had written in 2017. And his angst again was that Way back in 2010, issues were being debated. From 2010, we are in 23. He's talking about 13 years. I'm talking about 18 years. And he says there were concerns at a meeting called by the Ministry of Personnel about CCTV surveillance and all kinds of data that was mandated. Today, CCTVs are mandatory for all shops on the roadside. People have access. Housing societies have them. We don't know what they collect. We don't know what they do with it. We know for a fact that Indians, by and large, are unaware about the implications of having cameras watch you all the time. What they do in public, who uses it, who misuses it, what do they catch, we don't know. In fact, personal data protection legislation has been going through many, many discussions and iterations. There was a 2019 version. Now there's a digital personal data protection bill 2022, where the government has promised that it will be passed in July because the matter went to the Supreme Court. The biggest threat to our privacy, as Mr. Maheshwari correctly says, comes from government mandates, to which Mr. Nandkumar Sarvade, former IPS officer, data security expert who's been with NASCOM, had this very interesting and sharp response. He says, in our country, privacy has been the neglected younger sibling of cybersecurity, which itself is a malnourished child waiting for the state to start giving it some proper diet. In fact, he says the failure to put in guardrails for technology-based projects right at the beginning, derail good intention projects as they get mired in poor vision and shoddy execution. So whatever good work you may do, because we are known for our technology prowess if we are not concerned about safety. We don't put in these guardrails, as he calls them. Then even the best of projects, you've seen what happens. They're not tested. They're pulled out, put out in the public domain. They cause a lot of pain and they cause data leaks, which is a lot more serious. In fact, as things stand, the only time, if you ask me, where the government zealously protects personal information is when somebody asks a question under the Right to Information Act. That may be for a public cause, but that's the time when they will cite privacy and refuse information. Everything else is just leaking and being sold. In fact, it makes a mockery of Section 43A of the Information Technology Act, which on paper says that any body corporate that possesses deals or handles with any sensitive personal data or information should maintain reasonable security practices and procedures relating to such data. Now, I'm telling you that it's the Ministry of Corporate Affairs that's leaking our data. When it comes to NGOs, it is another government ministry that's leaking it. In fact, ask anybody in the IT sector and they'll tell you that the most leaks come from every kind of government database because people have no clue. There was a time when Aadhaar data was just put out in the public domain until they woke up to security issues. So people are buying it directly from the government. There's no regard to privacy, sensitivity, data protection, and 
our legal system just does not work for us. So you cannot fight it and you cannot fight government. In fact, the whole discussion on personal digital privacy and data protection seems to be afflicted by what Mr. N. Vagul, former chairman of ICICI, had lovely coinage. He called it the MAFA syndrome. He says, most things in India get delayed decades because they are afflicted by MAFA. What is MAFA? Mistaking articulation for action. So we talk, talk, talk. We've been talking 19, 18 years, like I said, and there is no bill. It's If all the noise and protests in parliament stop, there may be a bill or it may just go through without a discussion in whatever form it is, because that is what we are living with in a broken system. We will soon complete the first quarter of the 20th century. Our policymakers have already gone on to talk about artificial intelligence and what have you. But personal digital data privacy, which is about you and me, is not being touched because we the people and what happens to us doesn't matter. If this is of concern to you, and it better be, because not every one of us is in government, the rest of us have to save money and live on that money for the rest of our lives. We are not concerned about the safety. We do not raise our voice. This will continue for another 25 years. So wake up, raise your voice, make people aware, because unless large numbers are aware, nothing will change. Do subscribe and share this video. Thank you.